For the last two months, families whose loved ones nearly died in catastrophic car accidents say they've watched life-saving treatment get chipped away or disappear altogether. They blame a new law pushed by Republicans and Mayor Mike Duggan that was signed by Governor Whitmer with the aim of making insurance more affordable. But instead, families say it's led to deep cuts that could cost crash victims their lives. Here's 7 Investigator Ross Jones. What can't your brother do today? Um, he can't do anything without the assistance of another person. A strip of black ice changed everything for Clarence Golden on a night in 2008. The car he was traveling in slid into the median before being struck by a semi, leaving Clarence paralyzed below his shoulders. For the last 13 years, he has largely been confined to this bed in his home. Rotate your shoulders for His family and a team of eight nurses and nursing aides have kept Clarence alive since the accident, from all the basics like clothing and feeding him to giving him physical and occupational therapy, his four daily breathing treatments, and all the medication he needs seven times a day. His sister quit her job at a bank to become his guardian and full-time caregiver. I had a second chance, you know, because I had, you know, other people that was willing to step up, you know, with, you know, so take care of me. Two caregivers need to be with Clarence around the clock, even when he's sleeping, to make sure he's still breathing. He's a quadriplegic, which means even a bed sore could kill him. So at six foot four, 260 pounds, he needs to be moved every 15 minutes. It's all been a very heavy lift, but it got a lot heavier this summer. I know a lot of people um, refer to the date of the accident or their injury as the worst day ever but i would have to say july 2nd of 2021 was 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 much worse that's when michigan's new no-fault insurance law took effect it aimed to rein in the state's highest in the nation insurance costs in part by cutting reimbursement rates for treatment happening outside of the hospital like in-home attendant care by 45 percent for the agency that helped to take care of clarence the cuts were crippling on june 30th at 9 p.m they were out and I was here by myself. Clarence's care went from a team of 12 to just his sister overnight. Feeling abandoned, she briefly considered putting Clarence in a nursing home, but decided against it. He wouldn't have staff at his bedside and would be far from family. But the main reason is because he will die. I mean, if you research um, a quadriplegic, urinary tract infections are what kill them most often, not their spinal cord injury, but infections. So Shalice took on more shifts and on her own, pieced together a smaller team of four to help care for her brother. Before the law changed, she was paid $21 an hour to care for Clarence, but the 45% cut would slash that to about 11.50. Just a few miles up the street at a nearby McDonald's, pay starts at $14 an hour. That rate to me is despicable because I made more than that working at the bank in 2011. <laughs> And it's 2021, and I can tell you, I, I do a heck of a lot of more work here than I did at the bank. But the cuts don't end there. The new law also capped the number of hours family members could be paid to care for their loved one, 56 hours a week for the whole family. If Shalice only worked eight hours a day every day, that might make sense. But on one recent Sunday alone, she and her sister each worked 24 hours straight meaning they'd racked up 48 hours of family care in one day, leaving just eight hours for the rest of the family the rest of the week. Last week alone, Clarence's family covered 126 hours worth of shifts. They won't be paid for more than half of them. It's unconscionable. It's absolutely unconscionable what we're doing to these survivors. Representative Julie Brixey voted against the new law back in 2019, and today is one of 73 lawmakers who signed on to a legal brief filed with the Court of Appeals, saying the new no-fault law wasn't intended to affect those like Clarence, injured before July 1st. They want their benefits fully restored. But the court process could take months or even longer to be resolved, and in the meantime, pushes in the Capitol to restore cuts to providers have gone nowhere. Lawmakers in Lansing created these problems. Why aren't they in a hurry to fix them? There has been complete lack of interest in doing that um, with the Republican leadership of both the House and the Senate. In the Senate, Majority Leader Mike Shirkey twice declined our request for an interview, but released a statement saying in part, 
The new laws guarantee that any accident victim receiving lifetime benefits before the reforms will continue to do so going forward. Clearly not, says Shalise Wilson, who today has less help than ever to keep her brother alive, is working longer hours to do it, while being paid less than a fast food employee. What they did is they destroyed a system that worked. In response to an avalanche of criticism, lawmakers recently set aside $25 million to go toward funding gaps caused by the new law. Hard-hit acute care providers can apply for the money, but it's only temporary and could take months to receive. By then, providers say they could be out of business. From Southfield, I'm Ross Jones, 7 Action News. An important story that seems to be far from over, Ross. Thank you.